Yo, what is up YouTube? This is Pure Kicks, back again with another video. And as you guys can tell by the title, today we're comparing the Nike KD11 with the Nike Kobe NXT AD360. Wow, that was a mouthful. It was. Let's get it. Real quick, before we get into this, like, comment and subscribe to the team. We really appreciate it. And follow us on our socials too. This is Pure Kicks. Let's get it. Kobe Bryant and Kevin Durant are both great to the game. Both prolific scorers. I love watching them both play. Kobe, as many of us know, is retired, but his legacy obviously still lives on. KD, the two-time champion, back-to-back -back finals MVP. The man still building his legacy. And it's exciting for us to compare both of their shoes in the studio. So let's get straight into it. So straight out the gate, talking aesthetics. Now the KD comes in very strong. Very strong. Came in very, very strong. The also, Kobe also comes in very, very strong. Very strong. I said it in past videos, that black colorway is a problem. Very, huge problem. Huge. Huge problem. Huge problem. But the EYBL? However. Wow. The EYBL KD11. is something else. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I think just the, the entire silhouette, man. It's just a yeah. I think shoot. down to the shape, and then what they did with the EYBL colorway, yeah. uh, the flying it on it, the the the, the ugh. midsole thickness, thickness. Wow. Yeah. It's juicy. It does, yeah. Thick. <laughs> so with all that being said, the point definitely goes to the KD. Yeah, no arguments here. Thanks to even this colorway itself and the EYBL, it's a no-brainer. No-brainer. It's a no-brainer. Kobe still clean though. Thanks. Next up, talking about traction over here in the Kobe, what we have is the Killmonger skin traction pattern. And this worked like an absolute charm. I absolutely loved the traction on this. It was amazing. Bit the floor really, really well. Wouldn't really recommend it for outdoors. Obviously translucent outsole. But yeah, amazing traction over here. Over here in the KD, we see this wavy circular like pattern, which also worked like an absolute charm. It felt great on the court that we will normally play on that Mardi Dusty court, which is again, fantastic for testing these, these kicks out for. It really felt like it bit the floor. It definitely had you on those step backs, twists and turns. So yeah, great traction in the KD11. I think overall, the traction has to go to the, K to the Colby. You almost said KD though. I almost said KD, I started I think that there. says a lot. Cause I, I was looking at the KD while thinking about the Kobe. No, I get, I get that, I get that, I get that. I mean? that's what happens sometimes. I get that. I think yeah. that just shows how close it is. It's a, it's a close one. It is. But it's not close enough. I'm not close enough. That's the way to put it. Yeah. I hear close it. Enough. Okay. I'm on so bad. The point has to go to the Kobe. Next up, talking about cushioning, and for the first time ever in the KD11, Nike combines Nike React with full length zoom. I missed the part. Nike combines full length React with full length zoom. It's really all mad out here because React just got here. Mm -hmm. Zoom's been out for a minute. Mm -hmm. It's like when you compare. When you, it's like, you know, what it's like, you know, what it's like, you know, what it's like when you put a rookie with a vet, right? Let's call it JT and Kobe. Okay. You have a problem, right? No pun intended. Intended. However, performed like a charm felt amazing on the foot. You really feel it from the second you put it on. No break in time needed. It's just absolute bounce, impact protection. I wouldn't say it's low to the ground because it's not, but it's not high off the ground either. You're good to go and you just, you're good in all positions. You're two, you're three, you're four, you're five, you're one. I don't want to put it in that order, but yes, you are good. React and zoom out here. Call it Z-Act. Your turn. Your turn, Flo. Now, I'm very glad, Tim, that you mentioned that we have never seen React with Zoom before, full length Zoom to be specific. What we haven't seen before is this, Timmy. Does this every time. Ladies and gentlemen, the game has been changed forever. What we have here is the greatest combination of foam cushioning technology combined in one drop in midsole. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Lunar React. That bang! <laughs> Lunar React! Guys. Oh my god! <laughs> All jokes aside, what Nike have done here, they have combined their latest foam with its predecessor. So they've combined Lunalon with the React. The yellow bits, what you see here, is the React, and then the pink bits is the Lunalon. We have Lunalon in the forefoot, it's more firm, and React which is nice and soft in the heel and this combination 
feels like an absolute dream. It is where every basketballer wants in their shoe. Trust me, if you haven't experienced it yet, you're going to want to because this feels absolutely incredible. All right? Timmy thinks there's a debate here. There's no debate here. There is fully a debate there's here. There's no debate. There's no debate here. All right? There's I fully almost a debate. Said it's debate. You did. No you're best your words today, you know. Listen to me, you're bro. You're moving mad. I've got this a right here is a game changer. It's I get changed that. the game. And you're telling me this isn't? It just that it just sounds better on paper. It doesn't taste what as good a person, unfortunately. This right here, people, they've done it. They did it. So who gets the point then? Kobe. All right. Thank you. Next up, talking about materials in both shoes, over here in the Kobe, what we have is 360 degrees flyknit. Now this is where the shoe gets its name from. We have nothing but flyknit. Flying it everywhere and it feels absolutely incredible. It is incredibly light, conforms to your foot, breaking time is minimal, materials are beautiful, they're not that durable, which is my only downfall, but the materials are super comfortable. That combined with the React makes this shoe one of the most comfortable shoes I've ever played into me. So yeah, materials in this shoe are really, really good. Over here in the KD11, we also have flying it. It's not quite 360, no. However, we've seen flying it in the KD line since the KD9, and it's been evolving ever since. And what we see in the KD11 is easily the best version of it. It feels incredible, it moves, it moves extremely well. It's combined also with some padding on the inside, so you do actually get an advantage when it comes to durability. It does hold up a little bit better, along with the overlays as well as part of that material piece. Even back here as well, we've got some suede that also adds to that durability aspect. So the materials are really, really, really good. But the point, it's, it's a Kobe thing. It's a Kobe thing. It's a Kobe thing. Like Kobe you said, Maybe one of them, it's pro it, you know what, it probably is the most comfortable shoe on the market right now. 100%. Combined with what we talked about earlier, cushion wise, yeah. and combined with the Flying at 360, it's again, the basketball is dream is I want a shoe that feels like I'm just wearing my socks. And I think Nike and Kobe clocked it. They clocked it. So there we go. Next up, talking about fit, the KD11, like a glove. Thanks to that Flying that I just talked about as well, it conforms to the foot, no problems. The one piece also makes it super easy to get on and get off. It's just like a sock that even the pull tab even helps with that massively. It just holds the foot. The lacing system is also there for that more narrow footers as well. Guess Katie's foot is extremely narrow, just like his shoe. But the fly it does help with more regular footed people. So it does help with fit, which means the fit is pretty good. Along with the sizing as well, true to size. Over here in the code, what we have is an incredibly fitting shoe. Flyknit always gets the job done. Right. The way the shoe conforms to your foot, Flyknit breaks in in molds around your foot. So the more you play in the shoe, the more it breaks in, the better it feels. And I think it's something that we both experience in both yep. of these shoes. Yep. I think the only difference is, is that you have more true Flyknit here in the Kobe. There's less of it in certain areas. Um, so you've got less layering, I guess, where there's yeah. a lot of padding in, inside the KDs. Um, so you have more of a true Flyknit experience here. But it makes the materials, sorry, it makes the shoe a little bit less durable. I guess that's more to do with the materials, but in terms of the way the shoe fits, it fits like a glove. And absolutely amazing. The fit in the shoe was incredible. To the point? I think it goes to the Kobe. Yeah, again, I think so too. I think it goes to the Kobe because of that true flying it. Yeah. It just breaks in it really fantastically it well. Really it really conforms. It really does conform it. It's an just incredible like experience, yeah. So yeah. Next up, talking about the support in both shoes, over here in the Kobe 360s, Nike once again uses their triple threat support system, which consists of the outrigger of the shoe to help with lateral support, the external TPU heel counter to make sure your heel is locked in, and then the overall lockdown of the shoe. Obviously, this being a low top shoe, meaning that the support will not be that amazing, but this shoe definitely got the job done. On paper, when I first heard about the shoe, it being Flyknit 360 True Flyknit, I was a little bit skeptical as to how supportive the shoe would actually be, but it got the job done. This is a shoe, you lace up, you get buckets, you have to worry about anything, so the support in the shoe was A1. Over here in the KD11, support was also pretty good. Could have been definitely better. The Flyknit material, combined with how great the traction was, as I mentioned at the beginning, does mean you fall out of the shoe on some plays. Your step backs, your defensive slide can also mean that your foot isn't completely in the shoe, mm. which is my only, only gripe. And it has been even with the KD10 as well. If you look back at the performance review, I also mentioned it then, 
but it's not a knock at the entire shoe it's just i guess a gripe for myself and anyone else who maybe feels that way as well however you still have that triple threat support system with the outrigger shape the heel counter which is external on this bad boy and then of course that padding i mentioned earlier and the fly knit which helps with that overall fit and it being one piece yeah. so the support also goes to the kobe said it's a1 even though it's a low top it's great for a low top kd just doesn't quite get that stamp or that tick because it's there with the overlays it does help but it only helps a tiny bit just not enough last and not least oh i don't know timmy and um, now actually i'm i was very excited to do this comparison yeah and um, one of the reasons being this specific topic which is price slash value for money and what we have here ladies and gentlemen are two pretty much identical shoes low key low key identical right now the reason why i say this is because the materials are the same all right obviously they're a little bit different they've tweaked them a little bit differently but they're both flying it all right both flying it the cushioning is both pretty much the exact same all right we have two cushion systems combined in one here's react and lunar there is react and zoom and obviously the traction which again translucent and outside so what i'm trying to say here people is that they're pretty much exactly the same shoe <laughs> but for some reason nike decided you know what i'm gonna price this at 160 five 60 no 160 160 all right at 160 pounds now i'm gonna price you at 130 pounds Now the point obviously goes to the KD, it obviously goes to the KD, but this is something that I think is of great debate in the sneaker uh, industry, sneaker world for most of our sneakerheads is why these companies decide to price shoes that all of us want so highly. So highly, that's 200 pounds. So highly. 160. And like you said, it is just basically a very, very similar you know what I mean? shoe. Because all you guys are doing pretty much, Nike, yeah, is putting pressure on us, us as adults, right? Now, I've got a little cousin, right? His favorite player is Kobe. Now, obviously, he's 11 years old, so he can't afford no Kobe's. I have to buy it for him. I have to buy it for him because he's my little cousin, all right? And it cost me 160 pounds. Why? Tough. Why? You already bought one pair. Why? You did one pair for the channel, and now you want to buy two. But I'm the bad older cousin. Because I turn around and say to him, I can't afford them because they're too expensive. I can't afford them. I just, my heart can't afford them. Do you know what I'm saying? God, it's tough. It's hard out here. It's hard out here, man. Really Come hard. on, 160, bro, man. Come on, Nike, man. 160. That's tough. I'm sorry about that, though. <sighs> so, right, guys, looking at the scores, it is 5 2 to the Kobe. So, the Kobe comes out on top. Yes, it was evenly matched between the two, but Kobe came out on a few things. With that being said, I mean, the KD does look better, which is great. Um, it's cheaper too. KD is cheaper too. It is. So both absolutely amazing performers on the court. Just the Kobe guts that little edge. Well, it's quite a large edge. It's a yeah, large edge. It's a huge it's a edge. Oh, it's a cliff at this it's point. A, yeah, literally. It's a cliff. Everything. Right? Interesting. <laughs> so right guys, there you have it. Hope you guys enjoyed our comparison. If you did, hit that thumbs up button, show your boys some love and like this video. And of course, comment down below which shoe you think comes out on top. If you've tried out both or if you've tried out just one of them, let us know your thoughts and opinions because we love to know. And if you want to see what we get up to outside of the YouTube channel, follow us on our socials at This Is Pure Kicks and see what shenanigans we get up to. And lastly, hit that subscribe button the big red one you can't miss it hit that button to stay up to date with everything from pure kicks comparisons performance reviews nba basketball talks we've got it all just make sure you hit that red button to stay up to date and hit the notify bell to make sure you never miss a thing when it comes to pure kicks hit the bell because we've got a bunch of comparisons coming up with a bunch more a bunch more a bunch 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 hell of a shoes on the way to hit that notify bell to make sure you're up to date. So, alright, guys, that's it from us. This is the Nike KD11. This is Nike Kobe 360s. Where for your kicks? Let's, Let's get, get it. it.